Maybe Oklahoma is not that good at basketball. Is Houston? Is Iowa State better than we thought? What about Texas Tech? Baylor keeps winning. I don't know. There's a lot to go through here. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Drake Toll, Locked On Big 12. That's Cameron Stewart of Locked On Baylor. Let's talk Baylor and Texas and Houston and Oklahoma State and Oklahoma and everybody else because basketball got even more nuts on Saturday. Thanks for making our shows your first listen every single day. Cam, let's start here. Let's start here because there are some Kansas fans listening, some Houston fans. They're perturbed that they're one and two start in the Big 12. There are some Baylor fans listening. Are the Baylor Bears? who just got a huge commitment, by the way, five-star, massive. We'll talk about that later. Are the Baylor Bears, many are saying, the best team in the Big 12 right now? Oof. Boy, you opened up with a heater. Yeah. I'm going to say not yet. Host of Locked On Baylor says no. Great. Not yet is what he said. I still like Kansas a little bit more. I just think going down the stretch, going 100 Dickinson is something I would put more confidence in than what right. Baylor is going to having that alpha. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this Baylor's defense continues to get better, continues to get better. And they rolled out a zone in the second half of the game Saturday against Cincinnati that worked really well. Now, I know Cincinnati is not the most polished offensive team in this conference. Far from it. Probably uh-huh. a lot closer to the bottom than the top. It's a good team. Um, and that seemed to work for Baylor. And the the defensive consistent, the good defensive consistency is, is is showing up with this team. And they keep getting better defensively. So, Drake, when they take it up to another notch on the defensive side, yes, they will be the best team in the conference. If you had asked me on Thursday or Friday, I yeah. still would have said I would have been conservative and stuck with third because I do like Houston or I did like Houston that much, yep. but ah, got to play some offense, man. You got to, we'll, you got and, to, and we'll give so you a Houston. slight edge to Kansas right now. Slight we'll, edge. Give you a whip around. Let's, let's cover some of the games from Saturday that taught us even more about this conference, which is just crazy. Like the, it's, you know, cause Kansas goes to UCF and they lose the game and the BYU goes to UCF and they win the game. And I don't know if UCF is good or not good. I, I can't, you know, it's like, I think there are 12 Anybody's teams guess. who could, who could vie for good. Can I read you? Can I, can I give you some stats and numbers, some figures, facts and sure. figures? Hold on to your seat. 66, 60, 63, 62, 68. Those are the winning team's scores. The winning team scores in the Big 12 on Saturday. The defense of this league is, you ready for this? You ready for this? It's going to take some people off. The defense of this league is a caliber ahead of what I think Houston fans expected. Because they were supposed to be, they, they stand on business, they stand on defense. I think what we're seeing in the Big 12 is in the expansion era specifically, and this year specifically, the defenses have gotten even better, and that's why you're suffocating some of these new teams because they're just not... They, look, I get it. You put up 85 in non-conference play. Here, yeah. you're going to win the game with 66 points as long as you hold your opponent to 55, which is what teams are trying to do. Yeah, and specifically to the Houston point, I don't know if I'm overthinking this too much, but I think there's just too many shot makers in this league. And mm. I still think I still think Houston's one of the best team defensive teams in the country, and yes, one of the best teams in the country. I, I still do. Um, and they scare me defensively still. But when you play in the AAC, the, you can limit teams under 60 points if you're that good defensively. I mean, you can do that night in, night yeah. out. In the Big 12, you can have a really good defensive performance against a Kansas or a Baylor and mm. give up 72, 75 points. I mean, you can. That That's possible. Those guys have the shot makers. And I, I don't know if Houston's offense has adjusted yet. I do, And I say this thinking that they are going to be a top 10, top 15 team, I think, a lot of this year. But you, you, you can't completely out defense everyone in this league. You know, we saw it. Uh, the best Big 12 team of the last decade was that 2021 Baylor team, which had a really good defense. 
really good. I mean, not, I don't think they were in, barely in the top 20, but a really good defense. And they needed to have the number one three point shooting team in the nation and one of the top offensive rebounding teams in the nation mm-hmm. to walk through the league like they did and, and go on to win the national championship. And, and that is how that is the top tier of this league. That is how tough this league is right now. So I think, again, I think Houston's fine, but there's just these shots at the end of games where Iowa state can close it out and TCU can close it out that teams like Memphis could not Mm. Eastern Carolina, any of those above. Uh, How about our, our friends from West Virginia? Oh, proving, proving. I, I joined the Cameron Stewart show on ESPN central Texas. And when posed posed the question, what do you, what do you think about Texas? I said of the of the upper echelon, the nationally, the upper echelon, the teams ranked in the Big Twelve in the top twenty five. I think Texas is the most likely to completely miss out on March Madness. And there was an audible scoff on the other side of things. Yes. And now Texas loses to West Virginia, not the worst, not just the worst team in the Big Twelve, the most hapless team that maybe I can remember since those final Bruce Weber Kansas State squads that yes. just didn't want to be out there. And they just beat Texas. This is the, the I, I believe, I believe it is the final nail in the coffin where we go, yep, nope, Texas isn't that good at basketball. It's, I would say with West Virginia, if they had the option to opt out of this season, they probably yeah. would have done it. <laughs> like, I mean, that that is how like scary and, and, and no slight going in. to the coaches who are in this position, the players, right? Because like it got, they got, they got screwed. It, it reminds me of We Are Marshall a little bit. Not as tragic, but having wow. to put together well, a team a little bit. I mean, they had to, yeah. had to put together a team at the last minute here. Um, 56 with players did not and, die. We should be very correct, specific there. Correct. <laughs> uh, but looking at that, that te- this Texas struggle right now is... Ba- I mean, there were legit analysts who were saying this team is going to win the best conference in America. Yeah. You know, it, everyone was, a lot of people were saying Kansas and Houston, but there were some people out there who were like, don't sleep on Texas. Texas is just as good. They got this top end talent. I was a guy who was a believer in Rodney Terry and there's still plenty of time, but it reminds me of that point last year where tech fans really like felt and knew they were like, Mark Adams just isn't, isn't it? This is not sustainable yeah. long term. And they ended up, the, the administration found and it. Turns out, out of him. he was kind of a bad guy. Yes. Yes. You can't, yeah. you can't have intercourse with your, <laughs> your dead wife's sister. I think we've now established that. Not good. Not nope. good. And I think there's a little bit of that around Rodney Terry right now. Of what? Like, oh Rodney's, boy. Rodney's not that what? part. Not that. <laughs> not the, this is Ooh. much like, this is much like the, we are Marshall comparison. Um, so I think there's that feeling from the fans of like, Oh man, did we make a mistake here? You know, was was this the long term solution? Just promoting somebody the way they did at Tech, like that? Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a dangerous time right now because I mean, you think of West Virginia, even on the road, that has to be a check off victory. That has to be Sharpie, uh-huh. man. I mean, with this with this league, and they've still got a a, a good amount of talent, but you cannot be losing those games and they, they really struggle with the Cincinnati team, which is, which is solid, but uh, you know, n- nothing great. I mean, yeah. uh, they needed a, a, a buzzer beater basically shot with eight seconds left to beat Cincinnati. I know Baylor just beat Cincinnati by three. They're, they're a tough team, but every time Texas loses, you have to look at those things of, well, they, they didn't really do well with Cincinnati either. Can Do they have the talent to compete in this league? I don't think they do. I don't think they do. They could still be a tournament team. I'm not going to go full Drake Toll on this, but uh-huh. they are not in the upper echelon of this conference like they thought and a lot of people thought they were going to be going to this season. They were picked ahead of Baylor this year, by the way, in yep. the preseason poll. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. We had four games out of eight this weekend decided by one single shot. How much of this league is swayed by how poor the officiating is? Mm. Like, can we consider though when it, when a tech loses to or when a tech beats a Kansas State by one in those games? I, I like I, I almost want to get like a hockey. I just want to give give both teams a tie. Just give them a point. <laughs> give them a point. Give them a I point. will say this, and it's not flattering. It's so bad the officiating and so inconsistent that I think it all evens out. I really do. I don't think any one team is getting screwed. Uh, unless, it's going to come back around. Unless you're you're going to win a game because of it. 
Right. Unless you're the visitor at Fog Allen, that's yeah. you're always going to be a disadvantage, but it's so inconsistent, man. And I can go all day about it, but I won't. But yeah, it kind of evens out, I think. I also appreciate the Kansas fans realize that most of the ones that have come in the comment section are like, you know what? Yeah. 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 You know, when you're good this long, Pick it just kind of works out Kansas that way. Fans. They're picking their battles. Coming up, let's give you a Big 12 power index, effectively a power ranking, but of the top teams in this conference, who are those? This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team <clears throat> every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. When I say, oh, I need to make some money. Right now, I'm on vacation. Yeah-ish. I'm on location at my new job, which I haven't announced to all of you yet. I am. So it's effective vacation. I'm visiting. I'm saying hello. And I am betting on FanDuel. That's the one thing that I, I, I'm going to take it with me. It's going to go across the country. I think it's FanDuel. The NFL regular season has wrapped up. We're in the playoffs. You can bet on those things. Tonight, there's games tonight. New customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Same game parlays find best bets in the new explore tab make a parlay in the parlay hub awesome fandle.com slash locked on get your 150 bucks in free play it's free for you it's a new it's a free house for you jim come get your damn land fandle.com big 12 power index college basketball baylor's up there i'll give it to you kansas thank you BYU, we thought for a second, they live and die by the three. They got that win at UCF. We've talked about how Kansas State has been surprisingly good. Texas Tech under Grant McCaslin has been nails. 3-0 and in Big 12 play. Should be ranked in the top 25. I, way, real quick, yeah. the two, the only two teams that are 3-0 and in the conference this year started out 0-3 last year. Wow. Just putting that out there. Conference is nuts. One of them started 0-10, by the way. Oklahoma, 1-2. One and two in Big 12 play. They were a top 10 team coming in. Houston, one and two in Big 12 play. TCU has been surprisingly good. It feels like there are. Can I, 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 honestly, honestly, I'm going to throw that Texas game. I'm not going to throw it out, but it doesn't exactly apply to the statement that there are 12 teams that are uber competitive. There are 12 yeah. teams that you, they beat each other and you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And it's shocking to me that like UCF and Cincinnati are included in that because I thought it would be Honestly, a two-dog race. Kansas and Houston felt like the, the final four caliber teams, and they're going to be. But right now, would you be super shocked if Kansas State won the Big 12? I wouldn't be super shocked. I'd be pretty surprised. Texas Tech. Surprised. Surprised. But this is, like, yeah. Texas yeah. Tech. It, yes. It surprised. wouldn't take Armageddon. It wouldn't take Armageddon for some of these teams. And I would say it stops at about six. At about six. Like If Iowa State won the Big 12... I'm like, yeah, they have, according to shot quality, I love shot quality, you know that. I know you do. Iowa State has the number one defense in America, and they are leagues ahead of even a Houston, whose defense played against a pretty pretty easy non-conference, so we didn't get to see them. Now they're really getting into the meat and potatoes of their schedule. I just, to me, there truly are five or six teams that could win the Big 12, and I'd go, yeah, just the way the schedule shook out, that's the team that won the Big 12. I don't know. Can I be, can I be honest? Can I say something sure, controversial? please. Please. I, d I don't know that the best basketball team in the Big 12 will win the Big 12. I, I don't think that's that wild. I've said it from day one, and I believe it more and more every day. I think the regular season champion is going to have like six losses in the conference. That would not wow. surprise me. That's a I'm big number, six. but it wouldn't yeah. surprise me. The way these yeah. teams, like, it's cliche, but... Anybody could beat almost anybody in this league. West Virginia could beat Texas. I don't think they can beat Kansas or Baylor, but but UCF just beat Kansas. Like, I mean, if if West Virginia wasn't in the, the hapless situation they'd be in, we would have all picked UCF last and they beat yeah. Kansas. That's all they did. Like it, it is to say that it's the best conference in America is underselling it at this point. It's so much better than the next best conference. And with you, you talk about Iowa state and the shot quality and you're on one side of the bus in the meme, I'm looking out the window of the bus in the meme. I'm just using the eye test they do look that good defensively. Yeah, they I look so. just as good, if not better than Houston, who I, everyone, including myself, was thinking that is going to be the class of this conference on the defensive side. And I, I mean, oh, I, I look at some of these SEC teams that have real high end talent, like young guys who are five stars, four stars and all that. And those are good teams. But I look at the well-roundedness of the Big 12 and it, it, it's just second to none. And to your original point, 
I could absolutely see that happening. I, I could see yeah. a, a Kansas or a Baylor, you know, splitting the season series and one of them wins the conference. The other goes to the final four. Like I, I could see that, 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 yeah. that has happened before. Um, I think in 2022, Baylor had, <laughs> this is, this is going to be stick with me on this one. I thought Baylor had a better team and they had a bunch of injuries and they ended up splitting the regular season title with Kansas. And I was like, I still think Baylor's the better team. Kansas went on to win the national championship. So maybe it was a, it was a, a cheat to them that they were sharing it with Baylor. So th- we've seen this before, you know, and it, it wouldn't surprise me at all. If you have three teams, four teams that are top two seeds in the NCAA tournament, which is unfathomable most years, yeah. but yeah, I, I do think the top end of this conference is that good. And in basketball, cannibalism is not near as bad as it is in football. In football, it it can take you out of playoff contention. In basketball, it all it backs up your net. It backs up your FPI. Now your your season looks better and better despite some loss. There are losses that can move you up. Yeah, Uh, I I want to get. Yeah, we've seen RPI more than ever in terms of seedings in the NCAA tournament. It was always there, but now it's almost being treated like college baseball does it, which is yeah all RPI. Anyway, yeah. This is, here's where, th- this just establishes my point. Today is January 15th, all right? Iowa State, who again, you've seen the defense. I've watched, I've just, I've been impressed with what T.J. Otzelberger's team has done this year. They are my sneaky pick to possibly win the Big 12 and shock, that, that would shock most people, but if you've really followed them, you'd understand that they're good. Listen to this. Try to just wrap your head around this. Their schedule includes, coming up, at BYU, at TCU, Kansas State, Kansas, Baylor on the road, Texas on the road, at home against TCU, at Cincinnati, which is tough now, Texas Tech, who's undefeated in conference, at Houston, and then on February 24th, they get to host West Virginia. There's not, there's not, there's not the break. There's not a, oh, we get DePaul tonight. Oh, we get, we get Georgetown at home. You don't get, that is over a month. Brother, they might, they might lose six of those in that stretch. It's like the Texas Rangers lineup, man. There's no landing spots. I, I went through Baylor's schedule on the show the other day and I just kept going. I was like, oh my God, like there's no, yeah. now UCF isn't even a landing you know, like spot. Usually I, I would know stop with the Cincinnati. is like, uh, at Cincinnati, you could, but no, now that nope. sucks. Nope. And, and Iowa State, we could be talking in two weeks with that schedule you just laid out. We could be talking in two weeks saying, what the hell happened to this team? Yeah. I yeah. thought they were a player. They're not. That maybe, I don't know. It's just everything's getting jumbled. I, I honestly think there were people in the preseason polls who got, who evaluated all the teams and just got the logos mixed up. They mixed up Texas with TCU because TCU yeah. was picked down in the bottom half of everybody's picks and they look just as strong as as any challenger, really. Honestly, yeah. I mean, yeah. first three games they get at Fog Allen. And then home against two top 10 teams. They go two and one. And oh, by the way, they should have won the third one. Yeah. So uh, this any given night in this conference, I know it's cliche, but there, like you just read it there, man, there's just no landing spots. Unless you have West Virginia at home, there are no landing spots in this con- Maybe a UCF at home, but they just beat Kansas and they played BYU yeah. pretty tight. So yeah. It's just <laughs> there are two teams. I mean, Oklahoma as, State and West Virginia. That's what you get. And yeah, if, and and if the, if you don't see them in a ten game stretch, I'm sorry. I don't like. I'm sorry. There's and and uh, to wrap up the point here. To wrap up the point, I'm gonna amend what you said. I don't think the Big Twelve will get three or four teams on that in the one seed, two seed line. What? Instead, with the way this is going to go, you're going to see four teams outside of the top 25 make the tournament from the Big 12. And you're going to find that between that four to nine seed range, there are going to be six Big 12 teams that are under seeded that just mow through people in March. That win That's, tournament games. Yeah. Yes. They're they're going to be the the, the these just these mine. They're landmines. And you're like, I, I can't. Why are we facing this team? Why are we facing nine seed Kansas State in round one if you're NC State. Sorry. That's shit. There's nothing you do. That I always think about uh, the ACC teams going up against these. You know, you put up a perfect example there of like an NC State or, you know, a Miami, which is down a little bit from a Final Four year, year last year. And they've got to play Iowa State yeah. or they've got to play TCU or, or, you know, even one of those good Big East teams like a Creighton has to play 
a, an Iowa state or a Kansas state and mm-hmm. you're in for hell, man. Like you are in for hell. It, it brings up the argument of are the big 12 teams beating up on each other too much before going into the tournament because they're that mm-hmm. high quality. But I, I would agree with that statement with, with those middle seeds, which it now has become every year is just yeah. littered with big 12 teams and they're getting out of the first weekend. Yeah, yeah, because it is going to be because there are so many six loss, eight loss overall team, you know, 22 and eight teams going into March. Uh, Baylor got a huge recruit, by the way. I don't know if you saw this, but let's talk about it. Locked on Big 12, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Jace Medical and the Jace case. It can save your life. Jace Medical is where when there are shortages and there are shortages right now, let me tell you in the medical industry, when you can't get your antibiotics, when you can't get your medicine, that's what Jace is here for that. There's a a currently pharmacies, according to the FDA are running out of antibiotics, like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in a decade. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than not having medicine when you're sick. Thankfully, Jace Medical. It's a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff can happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com. J-A-S-E medical.com. Complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician. Your medications will be on the way. Never been important. Never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. Use code Locked On to get $20 off your order. Let's get jacemedical.com. $20 off your order. All right. Congrats, big. Okay. Can we just this last night this. watching, watching a kid go to a podium with Duke Baylor, you know, like Kentucky's in the mix and it just, you know, 20 years ago, you go, what the, what, what's Baylor doing up here? What's Baylor doing in this, this guy's kid top getting five? paid under the table <laughs> and lo and behold, I, I just, as someone who, I again, graduated from Baylor, but doesn't usually give Baylor its roses on this show, I'm, I'm there almost too objective. Shocking, yeah. To see a moment like that is is pretty cool because I, if you are at Iowa State, those you they, that team usually wins without those guys. Mm-hmm. A Kansas State is winning without the, a Texas Tech even, but Baylor's now winning with or without. The rich are getting richer. This is just this is absurd at this point. Baylor is a legitimate big. They, they are a big time program in college basketball. I keep thinking with Baylor basketball, like specifically this season. And look, I don't know if they're going to make a run of the final four or anything, but it feels like there have been watershed moments of the next step for Baylor basketball. First of which being the foster pavilion and Mm -hmm. the atmospheres we've seen there. And now this, he's got a Duke and a Baylor hat there and he puts on the Baylor one. It's it's just unfathomable for those of us who graduated not all that long ago to be seeing that. And VJ Edgecombe is a heck of a player, man. And they have got one heck of a recruiting class coming in next year with him and Jason Asimoda and Rob Wright. Uh, th- this will propel them into the top 10 um, for recruiting rankings, which will finally put them over TCU in Texas. Uh, but they will be in the top 10 with two four stars to five star. And it it just speaks Sounds to what, familiar at this point, by the way. Yeah. It, it's uh it speaks to what Scott Drew has built specifically at developing guards. I mean, there's yeah. just not many schools that can throw out there the lottery picks the last few years that Baylor has had. Uh, and and it's so guard heavy, including one of them being picked in the top ten, Jeremy Sohan has now essentially become a point guard in the NBA at six Who nine, was six ten. One hundred and seventeenth best player yes, in America when he came to Baylor. He was a Baylor, nobody. We were know? talking about Kendall Brown. And, yeah. and oh, the Sohan kid might be good too. And he ends up becoming a top ten pick. I yep. mean, the way he develops guys, it, it's it's a no brainer. And look, that's no shade on Duke. Duke is Duke. Okay. Even with John yeah. Shire, it's still Duke, but you come down and I think this is actually stealing right out of Drake toll's mouth. You come down and you see a game at the foster pavilion hmm. and you see that, that top of the line facility and yeah. you know, you've got a hall of fame coach. You've got a national championship banner up there. You've got a, at, at times, you know, a top 15, top 10 team playing in that arena. Yep. It's it's almost a no brainer. I know Duke what Duke is. I get that, but I mean, 
for the for the atmosphere they put together there, both on and off the court, the the way they develop players for the next level, it's incredible. And I think it, it, VJ in particular reminds me a good bit of Jacoby Walter, who's at Baylor right now, um, yeah. who was a high four star out of McKinney and, you know, winning those Texas battles are great, but um, he reminds me a lot of him offensively. Um, he doesn't have quite the shot that Walter has, but has, he has a good jump shot, great instincts, can get to the basket against just about anybody. Um, he's six, five. And I think Jacoby's about that same height. Um, yeah. So, and he's been a star this year. So Baylor fans can look forward to that. It is, it is incredible though, to take a, take a step back and mm-hmm. see Baylor over Duke. It's, it's a golden era, man. Yeah, you don't see, can, can I, yeah. can I ask something controversial again, sure. based on conference affiliation mm-hmm. coach, based on recent NBA talent and, and the ability to develop individuals because basketball is, is a very individual sport. Right. Everything you could, you're streaming at home. Like, no, it's a team sport. Look, th- these kids that are going one and done are trying to get to the NBA. Yeah. They, and if yeah. you have, if you have two stud players, you turn around any program yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. You know? and, anyway. So effectively with what we've seen from Baylor in the last even five years, has it in its current state? Is it better than Duke? Would you rather go to Baylor than Duke? Mm. If you're VJ Edgecombe, you would, or or Kentucky, because that's what is that uh, you're seeing this more like a Jacoby Walter. Same deal is he chooses Baylor over the, some of the biggest programs in America. Oh, can I give you a controversial answer? Sure, I don't care. I think it's just it's even. It's okay. even because okay. Duke and Kentucky are still like hockey Duke and we're Kentucky both to a, a certain extent. Yes, just... we're giving them we're giving them both a point. I'll I'll even throw soccer out there. They do the same thing. Um but even to say they're even is such a humongous win for Baylor. And I've heard over the years uh recruiting experts talk about you know, a conference doesn't really matter for these star basketball players. And, mm-hmm. you know, I get that that argument, but as we go on and the Big 12 is consistently much better than just about every other conference. I, I got to call BS a little bit okay. because we know it's a factor in football. We know it is. We, we know that a, a middle of the road SEC team is going to get just as much love from a recruit as Oklahoma state is in big 12, you know, yeah. like it, that's just how it is. And they see it because they say, look at how many sec guys are in the NFL. You know, if I go to uh, Ole Miss, I, I might not win the sec, but I, I can a play in some big bowl games and B I can go to the NFL. We see it all the time. Florida still uh, produces Which football players. Even when they're I'm not sure good. VJ Edgecombe is considering as we speak. Right. But, but you got to think about that in a basketball sense though. I, I, if I'm looking at the big 12, I'm like, and I will admit, sorry, I don't want to get off track again, but it probably means more to these three and four star guys rather than a VJ Edgecombe, who is a like five star, no doubt lottery pick. Um, but they have to be thinking, I am going to get battle tested every night. I am going to play with the physicality that they play in the NBA. I'm going to run offenses like they do in the NBA, like Baylor is doing. And I'm going to be facing NBA caliber defenders every night. That has to factor in. And so all of that to say, I I think when they come down to a decision like this and they let's just say they like Baylor and Duke or Baylor and Kentucky the same amount, they might be saying, I'm going to get better tested for the NBA if I play at Baylor than if I play at Duke or Kentucky, just off the competition that we're facing, the big games we're playing, the scheduling they're doing and the coach that they have. Is that, wow. is that okay? Well, they weren't saying they weren't saying that about Baylor twenty years ago. No. I'll accept that. They were saying that about Baylor six years ago, man. No, that's true. That's really true. What a national championship will do. Bringing That'll in, do I it. mean, it's oh, yeah. <laughs> I we're gonna look it's back. I know we're, we're over time. We're gonna look back at those those years like twenty thirteen to really twenty eighteen and go, what what happened there? What was that? Because that was it's such a weird. It's almost mostly all my go. time there. Yeah, it's almost like that ten year stretch where Tom Brady doesn't win a Super Bowl that we don't talk about. That he just you goes a yeah. decade. We just he just goes a decade. He doesn't win one and just starts rattling them off again. That's what Baylor was like. You know what? Give us a couple of years. We're just gonna kind of sit a little bit. Maybe lose some big tournament games. There's a Sweet Sixteen in there somewhere. Uh, Seventeen, yeah, mm-hmm. twenty seventeen. But outside mm-hmm. of that. You're looking at six years. No, they were just they were a good team. They were a good team. Jag. Uh, they they caused Jag. chaos. They were always going to make the tournament. Um, they would beat good teams. Team. But yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, we'll by Big 12 standards, for sure. Jazz. Huh. Um, that's Cameron Stewart, Locked on Baylor. This has been, it always will be, Locked on Baylor. And thanks for making this your first listen every single day. Locked on. Come back tomorrow for other stuff. Dose Grande.